There we go. Okay, so over here, see. Looks like you can see that. Yeah, that's moving around. So if you get over into, go over into a Blackboard and go over to where our course is, here's what you'll see. Now you'll need to ultimately create a YouTube account because a lot of what we're doing, you're going to end up uploading to YouTube and then you can send me the link so I can see what it is you've done. And a lot of what we're doing will be um, visually very apparent in regards to if you've met the requirements or not for whatever we're doing. Now with After Effects, you're going to end up using all the artwork and the assets and everything else you've uh, worked on in your other classes for CMC and bringing that stuff into After Effects and doing your motion graphics and special effects uh, treatments and applications. Now After Effects, has anybody worked with Premiere before? And all I'm getting at is, are you familiar with timelines and layers and that sort of thing? Good, this is similar interface in that regard. We'll use keyframes to move content around and it's the animation that takes, the movement that takes place between keyframes that's going to be our gateway into the rest of After Effects and how we can initiate some basic movement and some motion. But we'll end up, and today's going to be a little bouncy and all over the board a bit because it's a general introduction. We don't have our usual um, a big blue button available to us right now. And we're just kind of getting our feet wet with After Effects and getting things set up. But, and to get a general sense of what the software can do. Now, in the world of special effects, I'm not kidding when I say that Hollywood blockbuster movies, for one, rely on After Effects for their special effects. 3D world building is you know, Maya Light. We have another uh, 3D Max applications along those lines. But for the special effects, After Effects is the 600 pound gorilla in the room kind of thing. But there's something new you can learn about After Effects every day, which means we could all live to be a thousand and there's some new way to cobble information together to create something new and wonderful. But in order to get anywhere close to that level of understanding, we have to build a solid foundation with the basics first and familiarize ourselves with the interface. So what we need to do here is, like if you haven't already, go and download After Effects and the media encoder. When we render out our After Effects file, we need to render it out somewhere and the Adobe media encoder, which is a separate piece of software, allows us a lot more flexibility in how we render the file. We don't want to render something out as an AVI file or an MOV file. That same 900 meg file will easily be four megs as an MP4 file. So in regards to which file you want to upload to YouTube, you want the smaller one. And there's there are many ways to make, uh, generate high quality MP4 files. So here we are over here, back in big um, Blackboard. I'm sure if you recall what my navigation structure was like in the first semester, this should look familiar. Course homepage, the announcements section. And if you want to submit something after you get some feedback and you go, ah, man, I messed that up. I should have done this and whatever. So based on the feedback, you have a week to decide whether or not you want to, once, you, once I post your grade, not when you send me your project, but once I post your grade, you have up to a week to decide whether or not you want to make any revisions or not. And you can only revise and resubmit up to two times. We can't have infinite resubmissions. So I think that's reasonable. Typically we'll join an online class session here, but not today. Weekly course modules, same structure right here. And on a weekly basis, I'll make our modules available. Up here is the After Effects reference book, PDF book from Adobe. So if you wanted to download and have that at, on your desktop for whatever reasons, by all means, take it. Just go and download the whole 667 page booklet. <laughs> it's a big one, but it's all good, useful stuff. We have the assignments 
link here, which takes you to a little bit of information about the assignments. When you submit your work to me, gang, if I ask for your work, the actual After Effects files, there'll be a lot of sort of, um, you know how you, you package content in InDesign? There's the same sort of treatment being applied in After Effects, except you're doing this thing called file dependencies collect files. So if I need your After Effects files, you'll need to go this route and then just upload those to me or send them to me through WeTransfer. But a good, a very healthy portion of what we're going to do can be assessed in class visually because there's some tasks that we really need to focus on, not the creative, but you'll have two good projects to work on and focus uh, your creative powers on, uh, which will be well, we discussed that in a little bit. I'll take you into the rubric so you get a sense of how many projects we have. So the majority of your projects will be uploaded to YouTube and or I can take a look at them online. There certainly be cases when I need you to send me your After Effects file and everything that's involved in that. So one giant zip folder with everything. Go through WeTransfer, please. Rubrics and migrates. There. So here are all the projects. And again, check out the rubric. Same routine as way back when in the first semester. So we'll be taking a look at today, just getting something started, 5%. Next time we meet, we get into these things called pre-comps, key lighting, and some of the basic uh, basics of getting into some motion graphics and some treatment of other elements that are, be, that are commonly used. And then we get into uh, motion tracking and cinema graphs and a whole raft of other elements that are only barely touched on by the title you see here for the project. So, so why don't we jump into weekly course modules. Go down here to week one. Same structure again, reminders. Let's go to the assignment one section. There, and if you be, Good enough to download all this material here. That would be wonderful. And when you have that downloaded, this is what you'll end up seeing. There. So if you'd be good enough to let me know when you have that downloaded, that would be terrific. And what's inside there will be some practice, practice imagery if you feel like using some of it for today's little session. The project one PDF file, the support videos, which are these down here. And then a sample set of After Effects files. And again, since this is a very simple project, we'll take our time to look into it today. I'll get us all started on it. And it won't be due until next week. And when projects are due in whatever week, it's always by midnight of that particular um, class session. There. And once you have this downloaded, also open up After Effects if you have that installed. If you don't, it's not a big deal at all because we'll recap what we're doing today next week in class. And we can most likely get everything looked at and marked because we have a, a small class of 13 people in class during our live session. No problem. I'll have to speak slower because it looks like when I said 13, the, word, the number 30 was picked up. And as soon as you have that downloaded again, yeah, let me know because then we can jump straight into After Effects and begin taking a look at the interface and how to get some simple basic shapes moving using keyframes. <laughs> On a different note, how do you guys find your schedule for this semester? Not too bad?
And feel free to put a, a mic, turn a microphone on if you'd like to as well. Thank you. Yeah, good. Downloaded. Oh, that's too. Also, it runs the gamut pretty bad to perfect. Yeah, well, no early morning classes, and that's that's not bad. Some people are early birds, others not so much. When we get back to Big Blue Button, all the sessions will end up being recorded. Uh, so people, and I'll always fire off an, our agenda email the day before class so people can decide or uh, make an assessment about what we're doing and how much, uh, when they might want to tune in, if they already know what we're going to talk about. So maybe they're going to work on other things, maybe other factors in their life are going to impact on maybe they're working or looking after family and there was something like that. So there won't be any surprises that you'll be uh, suddenly coming across during class sessions. Everything will be above board the day before. So you know what the expectations are and what we're going to be looking at. And we'll always start whatever week we're going to, we're getting into with a recap of the previous week's material. And I always, this is just a reminder, I always like to give all the information out at the beginning half of the session. And that way, if there's any opportunity or for you guys to work in class, which I like to give you guys time in class and maybe 15 and 20 minute blocks, which means I, I go to the moon for say 15 minutes, then I come back and see what kind of traction you had with the projects where you might be and if you have any questions. So an opportunity to get feedback in real time in class and make some changes much sooner rather than later. There, that sort of thing. And then that way you're not going to end up just having to listen to me gab for three hours, but you can make an assessment about how you like to spend your time. And the, and the projects are designed in a way that I'm trying my best to factor in. You have other things going on in your life, and this isn't the only class you have. Okay, so are you guys ready for me to open up After Effects and take us in there? Anybody? Okay. So over in After Effects, this is one of the files I've supplied us, but I'll start out with something brand new. So file, new, come here, file, new, project. So let's just create a brand new project here. You'll see something that looks kind of like this. So if After Effects is already open and then you chose to go to the menu bar and choose file, new project, you'll see new composition, you see project over here, on the right hand side, you could, you could see something very similar to the structure I have, but you may also go up into the menu bar and choose workspace and cherry pick out the sort of workspace you'd like. I'm just working with standard, but like any of the other software packages, you can make your own and then save workspace. But I'm just working with standard. And these are the primary panels we'll be working with. We'll have the project panel. This is where everything we import in externally, which is substantial. So if I choose say file, import a file, there. There's a list of everything you can bring in. That's quite a bit. Every, that they will all appear over here like actors backstage and then we take them from here and drag and drop them in here into the timeline. There's layers here where we stack up all the layers of content just as though we would be stacking up layers of content anywhere else like Photoshop, for example. The composition, this is where we can define the size of the viewing space. And we can always edit these at any time as well, this composition. And over here, just general info, the effects and presets of which there's a ton for special effects. And you can also go out and purchase third party special effects, but there's way more than enough for us in here right now. And then down below here, there's going to be paragraph and track. You can work with type in here as well. There's actually, a, you can work with Cinema 4D. I mean, you can do pretty much anything inside of After Effects based on your imagination. And of course, knowledge in After Effects. So let's 
create a composition of a particular size. Now we can go to the new composition, little thumbnail here, or you can go up into the menu bar and choose composition, new composition. Either way, you'll end up right here. I'm going to change just working from top to bottom and we can just stay in basic mode. The width of a thousand by a thousand is what I have. If you have 500 by 500 or anything like that, great. The pixel aspect ratio, do not, I mean, just stick with what we have right there. And resolution, we can always change that at any time we want. And the reason you'd want to change that is if we have something really high resolution, I'll get to, I'll do that in just a sec. Um, I just have to look to my left on my laptop to see when people are having some, asking some questions. I don't see that same information on my workspace. Um, we can change the color anytime we want the resolution. If we have something with a lot of high resolution files, a file with a lot of high resolution files moving around, that might be consuming a lot of uh, power from your machine and lag, making things lag a little bit. So we just change the resolution down so we can move things a little quicker. But After Effects and Premiere Pro, similar but different. If you want special effects treatments versus you know, sort of like formal video editing, you want to go to After Effects. You're not going to be able to create all the special effects that Premiere, that After Effects has anywhere else. That would be the simplest way to, to answer that. And then the duration. So going down from just create something uh, from a composition window size around 1,000 and 1,000, that would be good. The frame rate, just keep it this way. Resolution, leave it at full for now. Duration, 10 seconds is good enough. I think by default, you would have 30 seconds. We don't need 30 seconds. Just change that to 10. And then the background color, click on that chip. I'm just going to create something a little brighter. And then when we're ready, just click OK. And then you can scroll back and forth with the mouse button if you like, but that's all we're looking for. It's a workspace so we can actually put some content down. So these are your standard panels. And now I'm gonna jump back into Blackboard and give you a sense of what it is we're doing today. So we're just getting things moving. We're not doing anything fancy. And this video can walk us through this. They're, the videos are project and task specific. And so if I go full screen with this, I'm kind of doing the same thing I have going on here right uh, now in the, during our session. I'm using the shape tool over here to create some simple little shapes that we're going to, and they represent any kind of shapes, but we're going to create five different shapes or four or five different shapes, and then apply from a sub layer of each of those shape elements, a transformation, which is really just scale, rotate, that sort of thing, positioning an object. So think basic transformations, basic movement, that's all. And these basic shapes are just a nice simple way to get that process started. And we'll move our objects around using keyframes. Keyframe represents a starting point and then the next position or next animation for that object. So the timeline reads from left to right, playback head. When you click on it and move it around like you're scrubbing, it's called scrubbing. And we'll move the playback head from one time marker, zero seconds at the beginning to I don't know, seven seconds, four seconds, to some other location time-wise. Then we go and move on our comp panel, that image to a new location. So from position A to position B over X amount of time is how this object moves. And that's all we're going to do. We're just going to introduce ourselves to the position scale and rotation and opacity options because the keyframes and these basic panels you cannot work in after effects without having basic knowledge about this stuff so i keep rinsing and repeating and doing the same thing over and over and 
until I have a whole bunch of objects. This isn't going to look pretty. It's just a task-based item. And we're just demonstrate a little control over the elements and we're, uh, and we're golden. I'll show us how we can you know, color code the layers just for visual organization purposes. We can right mouse button, click on the layers and put some blending modes and layer styles like drop shadows on. Simple things like this, because initially there's going to be a lot of one-offs and I'm just going to try and paste those out so we're not trying to memorize 56 things all at once every single day. And this is more of the same, just an extension. So working with a thing called the graph editor, it looks very fancy, but it's just a very, it, it offers up a nice elegant way to fine tune the movement of your object as it goes from one key frame to another. Instead of a constant stop and start going from one key frame to another with the object, you can have it speed up or slow down as it enters or exits a key frame. So something like that. And I'm just running through these to make sure that these still work and nothing weird happened in Blackboard. This will show us how to render our files, but we'll do this live in class. This takes us through the keyframe velocity and easings, which is just another way of controlling. And I gave you guys these files. So you could just take a look at them. That's all we need to do is just be visually aware of the existence of the ability to move our objects at different speeds. So it looks much fancier than it actually, and complicated than it actually is. So pause that. And then this is a little graph editor. So all these videos are all demonstrating how to apply keyframes and get some movement happening with objects. That's all that's going on. So inside the folder you guys downloaded, you have the project file, the PDF file, I should say. There. And everything that's inside of here that I've written for the project specs, that's what we'll see over here in rubrics and migrate. So it's the same you know, situation as um, back in the first semester. So essentially just a copy and paste. So we'll be looking for a little control over the size of our comp panel. Mine's already a thousand by a thousand, but I'm gonna change that to 500 by 500 so I can show you guys how we can edit this. We want the duration to be 10 to 20 seconds. You can use the basic shapes that are available inside of After Effects, or if you feel like doing something a little fancier, you can jump out into Photoshop or Illustrator and bring something in. We'll work with these four transformations, position, scale, rotation, opacity, Submitting it on time will be either show it to me in class next week or upload it to, to YouTube and send me a working link. Very simple. There, exit and get out of that. Go back here. Here's a little bit of practice imagery. It's just like a little JPEG of the Oriole back from uh, 120 class and some aliens. There's multiple layers worth of content in this Photoshop file. If you had a Photoshop file with, uh, I thought that was gonna show up. If you had a Photoshop file with many images, many layers in it, and you import that Photoshop file into, come here, into After Effects, all those objects, and all those layers will appear in separate layers in After Effects and in the exact same position they were already in. So it's just a bit of a time saver. It doesn't have to be a flattened image. And here are the support videos. So there you go. Just in case the internet's down, you can always just look at the MP4s and the sample AE files. These are this is the graph editor file that I use to make the video for graph editor, and this is a collection of the tweening. Tween is just short for in between. So it's the animation that takes place in between keyframes. And there's easy ease out, easy ease in, and just easy ease. Those are the humorous ways that After Effects labels the movement into or out of a keyframe. And all you can do is speed up or slow down. It's just the way of adding the brakes or adding some gas. Right, that's that. So back to 
After Effects. Okay, so over here now, just gonna go in and change the comp panel size. So I can go up here, composition settings, or I can right mouse button click in this comp area, composition settings. So I need to change this to 500 by 500. Good. And this is the actual project I'm doing right now, gang. Once you're familiar with After Effects, this project will take you maybe 10 minutes. It's the initial, you have to listen to me navigate us around and give us a tour of the basic panels and then describe what they do, generally speaking. So it takes a little bit of time. Okay, so let me know, just a couple of people just say, hey, ready to move on here. And then we can start implementing the requirements for the project. Into em empty, is it black? So composition settings, if your background color is black, it'll look like it's being swallowed up by the background in the uh, comp panel. So maybe just change the color. Oh, I see you might have, okay, sure. If I go, okay. What you might've done is click on this here, like that. Yeah, yeah. got it. Yeah, you're just toggling the transparency for that, so. Let's see. Okay, so now let's use some, make some basic or apply some basic shapes here. So up here in the menu bar, Toolbar area, left mouse button, click and hold the button down, rectangle, rounded ellipse, look familiar, right? Any shape will do. If I click the rectangle tool or any of those vector shapes, we'll always have access to the fill and the stroke. So if I click on the word fill, I have the options for non-existence, a solid fill, a linear gradient and a radial gradient, as well as these different blending modes, and opacity. So I can go, yeah, it's okay. I just want this to be a solid fill. So good. Okay. I click on the color chip. We're just changing the color. Same thing with stroke. Click on the word stroke. Here we go again. Same exact options. Change the color. And you can define stroke size, you can go all the way to zero. And I don't feel like putting a stroke on this one. So I'll just stick with this fill color. And if I click and drag to make a rectangle, that's what I'll have. Let me know when we have that gang. Could just be any shape, doesn't have to be fancy by any stretch of the imagination. So a couple of things are happening here. And, and you guys tell me to slow down. I don't want to speed up too quickly here. And keep in mind, this is not due today. We have lots of time to sort of go back and revisit this between now and next week and just familiarize yourself, get comfortable with, again, the panels and the layers and the time limit. Okay, so do we have some people who, and I can't, I don't know if everybody's doing this or not, but for the people that are working along, do you have something on the screen right now so we can move forward? Yes. And I can appreciate that you might not have two monitors to work with, so you might just want to sit back and just watch what's happening and create a visual memory of what's going on and then just work on this later, which is cool. Okay, there we go, Alicia. Okay, so. There we have this shape over here. Down here, automatically a layer is created. Whether we import in a file or not and then drag it from here, I'll just bring a file in just to show you. So I'll import in file, just grab anything from my desktop.
let's see. There's a 460. Take this old image here. Import. It your image will appear here, and you can take them and then drag them down into there. Is what happens. And there's another layer of it. So that's there. That's it. That's how easy it is to import in just a single image. And when you open up any layer, you end up with these sub layers. You'll always have the transformation sub layer. The shape layer itself, because it's a shape that's generated inside After Effects, it has other options for rectangle and uh, the rectangle path, the stroke, the fill, all the different options there, but you'll always also have transform. And that's all we're taking a look at right now. Later on down the road, we can animate the stroke around the outside of any shape. We can animate the color in here, all sorts of different things that way. So I'm going to color code this and I'll just click on the color chip and I'm feeling lavender. And then this image down here, dark green. And you can see how your layer itself is color coded. Just again, just a visual thing for identification purposes, but that's all. If I take that, that's the rotational axis on this object. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Now you can, you can rotate all these objects around and you can move them all by going over here and applying keyframes. But if your rotational axis is not in the middle of your object, so I'll just toss that off right now off to the side. And you can see that that is invisible as I throw it off the comp panel. That means that's never going to be seen if you render the file out with this over here. Only what's on your comp panel is visible when you render files out. And so I've got that. So I'm moving this now. You can see how the registration point, maybe you can see it, it's right there. And that's no good. It always, when you create a shape somewhere on your comp panel, the registration point is by default placed in the middle of your comp panel. It doesn't appear in the middle of your shape. So there's two things you can do to control how your object rotates. This is what's being grabbed as well when your object is being told to move around. So that location, that thing, that's the handle. You can think of it that way. But you go up here and you can manually take the pan behind anchor point tool, which are not the words you naturally think of when you're moving the registration point. Click that. Now you can move the registration point around. Or if you want an object to be directly in the middle, I mean, sorry, your registration point to be directly in the center of your object so it rotates perfectly smoothly and from the middle, so it looks very accurate. Go up into the menu bar with your object selected and choose layer. Come on, where are you here? Transform. And just center anchor point in layer contents or just control alt home. Yeah, centered. Just shows a little bit of control over how the object rotates instead of the, uh, I'll deselect the layers here now and make another shape. I'll change the color just to show you. So if I go over here, make there, see? It's still in the center. Or if I delete that layer, you know, I'd have to try and line my object creation as I create my object, line that up to the registration point. That's a real pain in the butt. It's unnecessary work. So you could just go over and do this. If you want your object to be directly in the middle, by the rotation to be happening from the center of your object. Otherwise, get the pan behind anchor point tool and move that rotational anchor point anywhere you want. Okay, fascinating stuff, deleting. So over here, there we go, we got that. Let's move something around here now. So if I open up the sub layers in shape and go just to transform, and everything I'm doing now is exactly what we see inside the, the how to videos game. We need to have a keyframe, say for the location of this object right here, and then if we're moving it somewhere else, we have to have a second keyframe. So some animation of any sort, an animation can be defined as just rotation or any movement or scaling. You need at least two keyframes. You have to have a before and an after. So 
we'll start out simply here. We'll just reposition this so this object goes from here to here and then back again, this kind of thing. So that's a function of position. You need to, with this object selected, when you're going to work with, click on the stopwatch over here for position. When you click on the stopwatch, wherever your playback head is, directly below there is where a little keyframe appears. That keyframe represents this object, whatever its attributes are, and its location in the comp panel. And I'll just show you what we're going to do. And that way, maybe you can just get this done sooner rather than later. Now I'll move the playback head over and I only have a 10 second timeline. Remember, because when I set up my comp settings, I typed in 10 seconds. So I'll move the playback head subjectively here over to four seconds area. I'll grab this shape, move it over here. And you can see, it looks like a little spine happening between the before and the after. And that's what it is, it's a spine, it's like a path and we can alter that, we can click on control handles on this and then bend and shape that path and control in a more than linear way how our object moves from point A to point B. So if I click on the playback head again and I scrub, you can see how that object moves from zero seconds in our movie to four, the four second point in our movie over that physical distance. And I'll play this very quickly. And I, myself, I prefer to, instead of going to the preview panel and clicking play and rewind, what is faster, gang, is just to use the space bar, click on nothing, so click on some blanks. Use the space bar, click that. That's a stop start button for the playback head. And the home button, resets the playback head to the beginning. That, me, that was me hitting the space bar. And then when I click on negative space, everything stops. And you can see that when the playback head gets past the space bar, it's still trying to get to the end of our timeline, which is 10 seconds, but there's no other movement occurring after this keyframe. So this object just sits there and does nothing. That's it. Now, does that make sense? Oh, you can always change the comp settings after the start for sure. Just right mouse button click on the space over here and go to comp settings, make some edits. Or Go up into the menu bar, choose composition, composition settings, same thing. There. And now if I want this object to move from here to there at a quicker pace, well, I'll just go click on this second keyframe that represents this sort of finish or this position on this comp panel. And I'll just drag its butt over here to one second. So now the object has to travel the same distance, but over one second, which means it's going to have to move a little faster. So for this project, all we're doing is we're going to go through these particular transformation features, apply them to some different objects, control the movement of them, and then when I take a look at your file, I'll be able to see, because you'll have these layers open, the application of keyframes, and you're controlling the movement of these objects. So applying keyframes, moving content on the screen is key. We have to be able to do that before we do anything else. And that involves making some simple shape up here, repositioning it on the comp panel, setting up our document, our comp panel, so we can control the duration in our timeline how long the video is going to exist, little things like that. Now I'll take, say, this keyframe, I'll put it over here. I'll move the playback head over here. I'll grab this object again, move it on the stage. Grab, move the playback head, move this over here, move the playback head over, move the object again. It's that easy to reposition. There's no precision here, but if you wanted to work with some coordinates, you can type 
you can go over here into these fields and just click on the numerical values. The first number is always going to be X, so that's horizontal. The second one will be Y is vertical. And you can copy and paste keyframes. So if I want this to end up exactly where I started, I'll just highlight that first keyframe, copy it, control C, move the playback head and over here to the end, paste control V, there it is. So now I have this fascinating little action movie happening. And you can go in at any time you want, highlight a keyframe, delete it. You can add them anytime you want by simply moving the playback head somewhere else. And you can reposition the object. You can see control arms and handles. And with the pen tool in the toolbar, you can see the convert vertex tool. So you, the pen tool here works the same way it does anywhere else. And if you want to get rid of all your keyframes, you click on the stopwatch or you can just select them all and delete them. But either way, you have a few ways to get to the same destination. If I click on the stopwatch, they're all adios muchachos, they're gone. Initiate more keyframes, click on the stopwatch, make sure in my case, I'm putting the playback head at the beginning. And then I'll just go back and do a little on-car performance, <coughs> excuse me, of what I'd previously done. And I'll copy that first one and paste it at the end just for a nice clean lap. There. Are you sure it's 500 by 500? Are you zoomed in like this? You have to just be zoomed out down here. Maybe just you see me hear me? I can hear you, yeah. Yeah, I like I put 500 by 500, but it still looked like a um, rectangle. It shouldn't. I'd have to see that. Do you know how to share the screen? Because just the width up here just should be 500 pixels by 500 pixels. We don't lock the yeah, aspect. Let me share the screen. Can I share the screen now? Oh, yes, please. Yes, sure. Can you see my screen? Yeah. You put like five, um, 500 by 500 here. What in the world? Oh, if you change but, the duration from 30 seconds down to 10, yeah, that one? doesn't make any sense at all. Yeah. And what happens if you go a thousand by a thousand? It's not look. Um, Is there some aspect ratio, something going on with your screen, with your monitor? I've never seen that happen before in my life. Yeah, it's kind of like new to me too. Yeah, I'm not sure if you have. Maybe do you have some kind of? Um, I don't want to change the aspect ratio on your screen, so those are the actual values. But because of, I don't know how your video card set up, how you, but everything else is the right size. Maybe just reinstall After Effects. Or do you, are you using the latest version? Looks like it, yeah, 2022. Now, just work with it the way it is. It's nothing you're doing, that's for sure. Well, not something I wasn't expecting to see today. <laughs> Change the duration, though, down to 10, anywhere between 10 and um, 20 seconds, though. Hello? Yeah, uh, sure that I, think it's, I think it's the pixel aspect ratio. Well, it doesn't look like there's anything different happening inside your comp panel. I mean, I don't know what you would have gone and changed. Um, for me, when I changed it to like 500 by 500, the pixel aspect ratio went to uh, square pixels. And then I just tried the uh, pixel aspect ratio that Meng Kuang had, and it did the same thing for me. Did you see well, maybe go back and uh, just underneath that the, up again, but it's still a what? thousand by a thousand. Yeah. Square pixels, yeah. 
Yeah, because we were. I was just using what you have set up here right now. At, oh, really? Yeah, the one. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the one thirty-three. Oh. Did it happen to you as well? Because it never did for me. Oh, <laughs> that's. It happened to me as well. Same thing as Ming Kuang. Mine looks like this as well. Hmm. I'm not using twenty twenty-two, so maybe. Oh, maybe that's. Because I just downloaded it, and mine's twenty twenty-two. Yeah, maybe that's something that's fresh and brand new. Yeah, because I mean, you haven't done anything incorrectly there. Here, I'm going to go back and uh, create another file from scratch and see if I can quickly replicate what you have going on. But everything else you've done looks just fine to me. Here, I'm going to screen share back again here. Okay. Yeah. Thanks for sharing. Let's see this. There. Okay, so I'll delete this. I'll just start out with an there. We can see that. Create a new file. See, I'm using 2021 file, new project. Don't save. New composition. See, I'm using the exact same setup. 10 seconds. Nothing else has changed. Click OK. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's interesting. Make yeah. sure that lock aspect is off to get 500 by 500. Well, that was, yeah, he definitely had that. See so if I do another one. Oh. Yeah, see there. Even if that's on, still should be square. All that'll happen there would be those alter a change at the same uh, value. This way I can just alter them independently. Different. Go 500. Oops. 500. Click OK. 10 seconds. Remember, the project is 10 to 20 seconds long. Don't use the default 30. I deliberately chose 10 to 20 to make sure we go in and change the duration here. I'll go make a circle because that's already available. Choose green. I'll go into layer, transform. Anchor point there. Blue works for me. I'll go into the sub layers for the shape, choose transform, and I'll just do this position thing again. Whoops, I had to go up here. There. Then I'll move the playback hit over here, move this over there, and then I'll have this come back to the beginning again. Copy that first keyframe, go back there, there. That's one of the actual requirements right there. So position, scale, rotation, opacity. I'll create another shape. Rectangle, go over here. I'll do this for rotation. I'll change the color. Let's rotate from the center. Let's see some control, unless you've got your rotational axis right on a corner somewhere. But whatever we're doing, let's make it look deliberate. So I'm convinced you're exercising some control over the tools. But I'm going to just take that and rotate it from the center. Whoop, there we go. And turn that to yellow. If you want to rename your layers, you can always just right mouse button, click on a layer, and choose rename. And I'll call it blue shape, very creative there. So down here in transform, I'll just click on, I'll leave it right there. Click on the stopwatch, put a keyframe there, move the playback head over here, and then rotate that much. Sure, works for me. I don't need to worry about that. Leave that the way it is. Move the playback head there. Rotate it back again. And then I'll copy and paste so it's just. OK, Amit, what you could do is, so I'm going to get to something like that in a second. Change the resolution from full to a third, maybe. 
Also, gang, you're going to notice that as we work on larger After Effects projects, there's a disk cache that After Effects automatically creates, and it won't take long to absorb 30 gigs of space on your machine. So what you would want to be aware of is go up into the menu bar and choose, come here, edit, purge, all memory and disk cache. The other option is you can go into preferences, get to the same location. This is really, really simple and small, but it's already consumed 381 megs, vector shapes are nothing. But when we get into more complex projects, 30 gigs, no problem. So you can just click OK, free up some disk space. If you're only working, if your computer only has one hard drive and you realize or find that you're running low on space for some reason, it's After Effects. So just clear it out and you're good to go. Yeah, I mean, anything we can do to help speed up the visualization and the movement is good. A new computer always helps, but uh, dropping down the resolution is also good too. Okay, so now we've got, there, these. I'll go to full, looks a little prettier. And if you felt like it, you could also right mouse button, click on the layer and change blending mode, come up with something else just showing us that blending mode and layer styles exist. Not very pretty, but we're working with the basic tools. Okay. I'm going to go, and so is what I'm saying making reasonable sense? I don't want to torture you guys to death by going too slowly over this stuff. And for those of you that, uh, yeah, you guys will be, if we had to do this again in three weeks, you guys would beat me up because it'd be moving so slowly. <laughs> okay, so now I'll quickly just make a couple of additional shapes. I'll make, say, the star shape. Put the uh, nice vibrant, this color here. Make that dark, not very vibrant. Star shape, sure. Put that in the center. I'm going to have this scale up now. So if this object is going to scale up, I'll change that color to, I don't know, green. Sure. Transform it. Your object will scale up just like you would, as it would if you were in Illustrator from that registration point. So I'm going to move that reg point over to, say, here. There. So scale. Click on the scale layer. Put on make sure I know where my playback head is. I'll just scrub it here to the beginning. Click on the stopwatch. There, starting at 100%, I can unlock that. I wanted to do that. Right, so you can see that's visually very apparent what's happening there. I'll just keep these at the same uh, percentage value. Go over here. Scale it up like that. Wonderful. Copy the first keyframe, place it over here. There. And if you like that, great. If not, reposition that registration point. And the only reason I'm putting a right mouse button, click on the layer and put a different blending mode in here is just so I can see through the objects and get a better visual sense of what's happening. See, so this isn't very pretty, that's for sure. The project's designed to be simple and be repetitive. And that's how, from my experience, we're gonna best retain the information and the tools and features that we've been working on. I'm gonna to have to find, I don't know where the Zoom recording will be located. 
I think it's I'm recording it onto my desktop somewhere. I'll see where the default is. It's not the same as online with um, big blue button and I didn't want to risk saving it to the cloud. So when this is recorded, I think I'll just post it over onto YouTube. I'll see how large the recording is as well. I might be able to uh, put it into um, Blackboard and make it available for download that way. But everything I'm doing here though, right now, there, come here. I've already put together in little video, how-to videos for you on Blackboard. So, because I'm being really retentive and going through every little step and talking about the panels and the layers, it's taking up, it seems like it's a long involved process and it just isn't. So once you're familiar with where the tools are located, what they do, what the features are, this project would only take you 10 minutes, but until you're comfortable enough with the tools, it's going to seem like a lot more than 10 minutes. So I jump back here. There, so I have three options here. I have scaling, I have movement, I have rotation. So if I rename this to scaling, great. This one here <coughs> was the positioning. So I can just say position. And rotation. There. All I need is one more. Grab another, get the polygon tool. And I'll just put that over here. There. Put a different color in, maybe something nice and red, sure. Just gonna put that on top. Then you could reposition these layers to adjust the stacking order of everything. So this one I'll label opacity. I'll color code it for fun to red. Same exact idea with the keyframes. I'll go down here to opacity, click on the stopwatch, wherever the playback head is. We have to always be aware of where it is. I'm starting at the, at the beginning, the keyframes initiated. There, it's at 100%, it's intense, it's a uh, value. If I just that uh, 100 and move it down to zero, it's invisible. Move the playback head over here, up to 100. Go to here, so on and so forth. So it's putting the keyframes in, we're always moving the playback head somewhere. We're at, we can physically add a new keyframe in by either altering one of the values in the fields here or moving an object on the screen. Then do this and have that fade out. Good enough. And all those position scale, rotation and opacity transformations can be applied to any object. And I'll click on this blank space just to stop that. Or I could have just hit the space bar if I wanted to. So that's probably a good 95% of the project. Now, if you open up all the expanding layers, or you can click here, see just where the divider is between these panels. The cursor changes and you can expose more of the layers below here. As you start opening up these sub layers, everything begins to look very complex all of a sudden. But it's the same thing over and over and over and over. And over here, you can see you can turn the visibility of layers off or on again. A lot of common features between all the software packages in regards to what the, the standard features for layers are.
we don't need to get into it today, but there's about a million other little things that we can do while we're in this kind of environment in After Effects, but we'll do it all. We'll get to all those in time. So what, what I've shown us, gang, does that make it's reasonable sense? Hopefully it doesn't seem too complicated. It's just a matter of practicing. And this is definitely just the very beginning of introducing ourselves to After Effects. Anybody who's new to After Effects has to do exactly what we're doing right now. We have to be able to control a comp panel by sizing it, adjusting the frame rate, the duration, you know, time, the size, the color, that kind of thing. Then it's a matter of what are we trying to do? Let's bring in all our assets from wherever they are, audio, video, anything. Are there any questions about anything right now, gang? Very quiet. Okay, so are we ready for me just to show you guys how to render this out so you can actually have a video file to work with to upload anywhere? Oh yeah, you guys can show me in class. If you guys are comfortable to screen share and show it to me in class, I'll write your name down, I'll sign it off, I'll go right into Grade Center and type in the full value. But it it's very, very important, gang, that we're very comfortable doing what we're doing now. It's, this is the linchpin, the foundation of everything else we're going to do moving forward. We have to be able to comfortably create keyframes, work with layers, work with the comp panel, that sort of thing. This is due by midnight of next week, but I have, I'd be happy to start off our next class because we only have 13 people, having everybody just one at a time show me their file the way I'm showing mine right now with the layers open up so I can see the keyframes. I can see this running in class. And then I sign your name off. If we had 36 people, that would be different. But 13 is an awesome size to uh, a number of people to be working with. And being a lot and giving us lots of time to screen share and get on with everything else that we need to take a look at. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll render this out here right now, gang. So I'll go up into the menu bar, because this is all just editing mode. So if I go up into the menu bar and choose composition, and everything, again, every single thing I'm doing is located inside of those how-to videos I've supplied you guys. Composition. Now down here, you see two options for rendering. You want to use this one, add to Adobe Media Encoder Q. That's the outside software. If you choose that Adobe's offers. Render Q is the internal rendering engine inside of After Effects, and you'll get an MOV or an AVI. We don't want to use that. We want MP4 rendering, and that's only available out here. Okay, now notice my comp panel background is yellow. So. I just clicked on the Adobe um, Media Encoder Q. It's going to launch the software automatically. And then over here, I'm just being patient. My file will pop up over in here. There it is untitled. By default, the rendering will already be at MP4 level, 
You don't need to click on this expanding arrow and experiment with all of this other stuff in here. Click over, you don't have to touch this either for now. Just click over here under the output file column. Are you sure where you want to save your file to? Then click on this layer. Click um, render. Oh, faster. Oh, yeah. We, we cannot see that. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's that's a whole new panel. That's right. We're in Zoom. Mm -hmm. Okay. Where is the new? There, let me go back and do, do that again. That's already rendered out. Okay, where were we? After Effects, here we are. Okay, got that? I'll do this again. So composition, add to Adobe Media Encoder. Pops up over here. Should be up, there we go. And again, gang, this is what I put together in the video. You do not have to play over here, this format preset output. <coughs> Excuse me, the H264 is already MP4, we're good to go. Keep it at that, keep the high bit rate going. We don't have to alter anything in here right now. Under output file, click on here to determine where you want to save your file to. Call it whatever you want. Copy, there, save. Then with this layer selected, because you can click on each individual layer, but this one, click here. See a preview down here. Right. Now that file, I'm gonna guess that my desktop isn't showing. We'll find out in a second. Man, I've got everything going on here. There, can you see? No, okay. Let's see, do this. Okay, can you see that? There we go. So here's that MP4 file. If I double click on that, it'll play. But you can see that's a black background. So when you use the Adobe Media Encoder queue and render the black, the comp color background that you had set up doesn't matter anymore. It gets blown out of the water. You have it turns black no matter what. There. So you'd have to go back in here. Come here and physically put in a big solid color in order to have this comp panel show up or a physical photo image or anything like that. So I'll do that. Let's create anything Come here. Big rectangle, red, sure. I'll continue to change it to something else there. But now I'll need to reposition that layer so it's at the very bottom of everything. There. It's just the way it is. So if I work with that, then render this out. Composition. Add to Adobe Media Encoder. Here we go again. Desktop. Copy. Oops. There. And render. Now you can see right there in the preview thumbnail that the background color is green. It looks green, but it's yellow. There. And there it is. It's a real Oscar winner, isn't it? That 
is for all intents and purposes, project one. That's all the assignments she talks about in here. 10 to 20 seconds, 500 by 500 pixel comp panel. You can use your own images if you want, or you can just work with the shapes that we just created inside of After Effects. And by doing what I just did, you would have convinced me that you can comfortably achieve movement using the transformation features in After Effects. That's it. You can show me your working file in class or upload it to YouTube. But this one's a real simple one. You can just show it to me in class and I can take a look at it and go, when you open up a few of the sub, a few of the layers, it's easily visually apparent that you've met all the requirements. Um, Daniel, it's, this isn't re recording the process. This is just rendering it out. Right now we're in After Effects, just editing mode. If you want to do anything with the file afterwards, you have to render it out so you actually have a physical video file. And all I'm doing here to put another shape in, it's just the same way I used created any of these shapes. You could import in another file or another image. I'll get rid of shape. All I did was just go up here again, get a rectangle, anything. And I'll change the color to something that for sure. And I just made a great big shape and drag that layer underneath everything else. That's all I did. Well, you're going to here use the transformation features, which are there we go. Only these four, position, scale, rotation, opacity. And each one of these layers, see, there's position, ro scale, rotation, opacity. That's it. So at most, you'll only need five shapes, one for opacity, one for scale, one for rotation, one for positioning, and then something in the background so there's a nice color um, to make all your other images show up. Otherwise, without that, whatever your composition settings are for a background color, it's irrelevant. It'll be rendered out as black. That's it. So as boring as this looks, there's just a lot of little steps here, but a lot of repetition is all that's going on. And I really wanted us to appreciate the through the repetition what is this, what it is that's happening and uh, it's going to be impossible to forget what we've done here because of the sheer amount of repetition and then everything else we do after this is based upon being able to control shapes with keyframes and layers and using the project panel and things to that effect but we have to take like little baby steps to begin with before we get into the really cool stuff. Here's a totally different question. Is this your only class for today or do you have one before this or after this one? I only have one. Oh, okay, that's so just depending where you are, it's either 12 noon or midnight, <laughs> okay. Now, how would you? Oh, sorry. Yeah. Okay. To sum it with the rectangular shape, is mine is mine looks like main Kong's. Well, if you're square, if you mean your comp panel looks rectangular instead of square. Yes. Oh, don't worry about it for right. If and if you're thinking I'm concerned about that, and that's the deduction or something for what we're doing in our class, <clears throat> that's not the case. I'm just taking a look for now at what your comp settings are. And I also didn't want people creating giant 8K images or comp panels that are the size of Texas because that's happened in the past. So this is just a way to control the size and the space in which everything's going to be contained. But I'm gonna look into why that's happening with you. It might be a known bug.
That speech to text isn't as accurate as I was hoping here. Does anybody have? Adanya, yeah, the project is due one week from today. You can either show it to me in class now. Yeah, you can just leave it here. I'll go back. You can just show it to me in class now, or we can start out our session next week in class, and you have time between now and next week to work on this a bit more and get a little more comfortable and familiar with these basic tools. And we'll recap what we did today very quickly, but we will, uh, you, we being you, can show me your project online through screen share, and then I can sign it off right away. excuse me, and go back here, the comp panel, comp settings. I'm not doing square pixels. I've got this happening here. This is the default. I go square pixels. That changes a little bit, but you can go either way. But the comp panel itself, it shouldn't be changing. It should just still always look square. Well, this recording is being apparently produced and put onto my desktop. So once I get, once this is rendered out or processed, I'll see how large it is and I'll figure out where I can put it. But it's not like big blue button where you go, uh, into big blue button and you have access to the recording and can download it from there. But also, and you guys can just simply go into and look at the how-to video. Because all I'm doing is exactly what's in the video. Same exact thing, except this way, you don't have to have my annoying voice in your ear. Just follow the same instructions that I'm outlining here in the text in the callouts. So I'm doing exactly the same thing. There's no way to shortcut anything that we're doing here. And what we're doing is not something with these keyframes and these transformation features that I happen to think is kind of cool. They're just absolutely necessary uh, need to know tools in After Effects to get started at every image you bring in is going to have options for. Oh, let's see, Humphrey. First question there, Humphrey, you fixed your After Effects? What do you mean by fixed? Do you have every the comp panel looking square? Let's stop this. Here, I'll create a new file again. File, new, new project, don't save. New composition, works for me. Yeah, good, see that's, I mentioned before, just reinstall, sometimes that is all that's needed. It's not the first time in the world anybody's had to reinstall. I've had to do it a couple of times for sure some little thing got corrupt on the download, that's all. There, so anytime I want to add a new shape in here, all I'm doing is going to the shape tool up here. You could use all rectangles. It doesn't matter if you use rectangles or a combination of all of these shapes. Rectangle, click and drag to make a shape. Change the fill color. Just the same way you would change the fill on anything. Click on the chip for the color, click on the word fill to make sure you have a solid fill. But we don't need to go in here because by default it would be solid fill. If for some reason you've clicked some buttons and you have linear or radial gradient, you'll end up doing something that you won't expect. And then over here is none, a backslash. Let's uh, see, I can't click the panel. Um, what do you mean? Do you not have this panel available? That would be a function of the workspace. 
So if you go into window and choose workspace, try out one of these, click on standard, or go and turn on some of these, make them visible. But I find that standard works just fine. There. And then I'm always going up and getting the selection tool. So pretend you're an illustrator or InDesign or anywhere. Basic shapes, selection tool, moving objects around here on the comp panel, on the, on the composition screen. I'll just call it the stage. There, there's that shape. Now, if I deselect, meaning I don't have that layer selected, click on nothing, I can grab another shape. And it automatically is created on its own layer. Get the selection tool again, deselect, click on nothing, create another shape. And I'll change the color so I can see. There, let's see, blue, there. There's another shape. So I'll right mouse button, click on the layers and just name them blue. Get the selection tool again. Now I have three separate objects. And the registration point is wherever it is relative to, because it's in the middle of the object, relative to where a uh, middle of the comp panel, relative to wherever I position my or created my object. So if blue bar, green bar, I'll just click on the color chip. Change the color for fun. There, you don't have to do any of this. I'm just doing it to make it visually a little easier so you can see what I'm doing. There. Then click on the little expanding arrow to open up the sub layer, get into transform. I'll choose scale for this one. Click on a stopwatch to get a keyframe started wherever the playback head is. We always have to be aware of where it is. I didn't move it anywhere, so it would be right at the beginning. So there's that keyframe. Now I can scale the object up. And if I don't like the way it's scaling, and I don't because I want control over this, I'm going to make sure that layer, that object is selected and go up into the menu bar and choose layer, transform, center the anchor point. Now it looks like I have a little control over what I'm doing. Now let's see, if you choose window, try a different workspace. Those tools should be appearing. So if I don't have tools selected, choose window, tools. Try that. It should either show all the tools or none of them. That's different. And yeah, all you can do is, again, under window, turn on tools or go to workspace and try turning on the different panel defaults um, and presets to see if that maybe gives what you're doing a little kick in the pants. And then you just go through each layer a green bar now, maybe I want to position that. So I'll click on the position stopwatch, move that object there, move the playback head over here, move the object down here. I'm now creating a key first keyframe and a second keyframe where the distance on the screen here is from here to here. So over four seconds, that object travels that distance. Move the playback head somewhere else over here. Just grab this object again, move it somewhere else. Come here. Things like that. Maybe try turning your machine off and on again, Humphrey. 
because there isn't anything you're doing that's incorrect. It's just unusual that it's happening to you. Because there's, yeah, you, there's no reason for that to occur. It sounds like there's some kind of a little conflict or a bug or something going on there. What you could also do, yeah, in just a second there, um, you can show me your work for sure. But if you say you don't want, you've got this, and I don't want that, I don't want that, to say I'm too busy to make five or four separate shapes, you make sure your layer is deselect, because if your layer is selected and then you make another shape, you're adding another shape into that layer. We don't want that. So we have to be aware of whether or not we have a layer selected or not. But you can take this, because we're so busy, we just want to duplicate this and then edit it. You can always just select a layer and choose edit and duplicate. There. And now I can take these and edit the contents in them, maybe just select the object change the color. My point being, you can copy and paste to duplicate keyframes. You can select layers and press Control or Command D and duplicate the layers as well. Yes, I'd love to be able to take a look at some of your work right now. That would be terrific. Let me get a pencil that has lead in it. That would be good. And as soon as you're ready, remember, gang, you do not have to show this today. It's not due today. It's due by midnight of next week's class, but I'm confident you'll be able to show it to me some today and some uh, at the very beginning of next week's class. So you guys can self-organize in regards to the sequence in which you're going to um, present. But whoever was going first, I can't remember here. Yeah, you can go. I think uh, Hong Suk, you're ready to go. So let's yeah take over the screen and let's see what you got. And you guys feel free to uh, turn on your mics too. Here, just do, I'm gonna do a simple little thing here, gang. Here. There. out of there where are the layers there when you guys choose the share screen new share if you click on just the screen thumbnail everything on your desktop all your other panels and windows they'll all be available so you can go straight to after effects if you click on that so click on new share this panel pops up click screen and you're good to go Okay, let's see, here we go. Let me see the name, okay, got the name here. And if you wanted to turn your mic on, I can see there you, what you've got there, Hong Su. Hello. Oh, cursor's moving. That's good. So yeah, let's the layer structure looks terrific. Here, let's play the file. If you hit the home key between, uh, just around where you have uh, the insert button and such, that'll reset your playback head right to the very beginning. 
And then when you press the space bar, that's just a quick way to stop and start the playback. Wonderful. Any, and anywhere, but uh, for fun, if you grab those two keyframes or one of those keyframes in your anchor point file, grab the last keyframe, please, and just drag it out to the nine second marker. Perfect. Yeah. And then press the home key this time instead of moving the playback head. Uh, where's the home key? Yeah, just press, yeah, the home key on your keyboard, your playback head should go straight to the very beginning of your timeline. It's just a shortcut, that's all. Uh, sir? Yes. Uh, what is the shortcut? Oh, well, it's the, the home key button on your keyboard. On my keyboard, I have like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, all in a row, and then the arrow key, and then insert, and then the home button. Just the home button. All it is is just a hot key. Yeah, that's just a quick way to get your playback head to the very beginning of a movie if that was convenient for people. Uh, I'm kind of lost. Okay, well, just move your playback head manually then to the zero marker. Yeah, that'll work. Yeah, because you have like F1, F2, Control, Enter, all those keys on the keyboard exist. That home key, which is in the middle of those nine buttons, is, is just a quick way. Okay, now with that there, instead of pressing, just press the stop, the stop, the space bar to start and stop the playback. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And then you can see how the orange circle is moving slower because the key frame was moved further down the time. Perfect, works for me. I'm convinced you have control over how the key frames work, making a shape, moving layers around, all that stuff. See, it looks super complex. It's like we're in the Starship Enterprise. You went to the trouble of color coding and renaming, wonderful. Good, I'm marking that off as 100%, it's done. You do not have to send me that file. Once it's just save it, maybe go through the process of the adding keyframes and uh, yeah. making shapes and adding layers just so you don't forget what we did today. And that would be awesome. But thank you so much. That's done. Thank you. Now, who would like to go? Anybody? All right. Okay, let's see some of those layers opened up, please. 10 seconds, that looks good too. All right, transform, yeah, perfect. That'll, yeah, just one of the layers. And if you open up the transform sublayer, yes. See, when the transform sublayer is opened up all the way, you see the little keyframes as full diamonds. But if the transform sublayer is not opened up all the way and you have keyframes in there, that's when you see the little dots. You can't move the dots, you have to move the full keyframes. Okay, hit the space bar and let's take a look at this. Yeah, works for me. It's another, it's just like looking at Lord of the Rings. It's so exciting. <laughs> Great, thank you so much. I'm convinced you know what you're doing with the keyframes and layers and some basic shapes. Excellent, thank you so much. Uh, hi, can I Hello? go next? Yes, hell oh, man. Okay. Uh, let me share the screen. Oh, yeah, here. Can you see it? Yes, it just came in. Nice, clear picture, too. Okay. Yeah, let's just take a look at one of the layers opened up so we can see the placement oh. of the keyframes. Oh, lots, good. And you added a couple too, wonderful. 10 seconds in duration, great. Let's play it. Okay.
Yeah, no problem. Yeah, clearly. Okay, I was worried I'd have to like add more effects. No, no, it's a super simple five percenter. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, once you finish it up, it's all kind of almost all I must be missing something. There must be more to this, but it's <laughs> it's not the case. Thank you so much. Thank you. There, that's three people now. Uh, sir. Yes. I just I just realized the um I don't think I have the home key on my uh, keyboard on my laptop because it's the keys up of like on the right side of my well, on a usual keyboard it should be on the right side but I don't have. Oh, okay. It. We have it might be across the top row then somewhere somewhere on your laptop oh. there's a home key. I'm just on a desktop. That's all. Okay. I just wanted to make sure. Yeah. No. Thanks for bringing it up. Does anybody else have anything they'd like to get sign off on right now? It seems pretty quiet. Does that mean, well, it is time, is it it's 20 after two? Do you guys have any questions about what we did today or that you'd like to ask right now? I'll take that silence as a no. How do you get other shapes? But you just go up into the menu bar or the toolbar and you just simply just pretend you're an illustrator and you're going to add another shape that way. Just go up here and click and drag. Just make sure you don't have a layer selected. You can see that layer is selected. But if I get the selection tool and then deselect, meaning click on nothing, I've deselected that layer. And then I'm creating a brand new layer every time I make a new shape. See, that's all. That's it. And this is the kind of thing, gang. You, we're not going to learn After Effects by dabbling for three hours every week. You want to practice a little bit between classes for sure. I mean, feel free to go on Google, adding keyframes and moving shapes online, but you'll end up at the exact same place we're at right now, we are at right now. There's no other way to do what we're doing. This is the only way. Daniel, can you share the screen just so we can see what you're doing? Because you should be able just to create some shapes the way I showed. If I delete all these, press delete, and then I just go and get one of these shapes, polygon, done. Click and drag. Can I show you mine? Yep, for sure. Um, can can you see? Oh yeah, I can see it. Yeah, it's coming through. You got it at a third resolution, nice full screen. So you've got this rotation, the movement. Where's the scaling? And where's the opacity? Oh, oh there's Oh, this, oh, let's see what's, oh, there it is. Got it. Okay. And I'm just waiting to see the opacity. My, let's see. I don't see anything fading. Can you add yeah. some opacity to something? Yeah.
you'll have to have a couple of keyframes, otherwise you've just set the opacity. So you want to see the opacity go from one setting to another, like 50% to 100% or something. Perfect, yeah, let's do that. There. There, that works for me. Great. Thank you. Thank you so much. It'll, this will be a lot more interesting for you guys when we start doing more interesting things and get into some of uh, the, the cooler features, but we've got to be able to work with the basic, basic tools here right now. In a week, you guys will be cranking this out in minutes. Anybody have anything else they'd like to share or ask right now? You have. Yeah, that's exactly. Yeah, just click and hold to get the other shapes, just like you're an illustrator. Excellent. Just. See that little expanding arrow? Just hold your left mouse button down. Ta-da, there are all the other shapes. Same thing with the pen tool. Yeah, don't forget what you guys understand about interfaces and toolbars and menus and the other software packages. After Effects is still an Adobe product where a lot of the hotkey commands to get some of the tools. For example, the type tool, control T. Or if I just press V, I'm automatically working with the selection tool. <coughs> the After Effects is gonna be a little more processor intensive than Illustrator and such. That's why in a lot of cases, you might just want to drop the resolution down. We'll ultimately get into working with cameras, moving multiple cameras around so we can do fly throughs of environment, have real time lighting. We'll have objects morphing into other objects, whether they're vector shapes or bitmaps, it doesn't matter. We'll be working with audio, making our own custom effects. We'll be doing things called roto brushing, where say I've got a picture, uh, I've got, I see a man's name. You're walking down a sidewalk in a park. We'll pull you out of that park environment and have you walking in front of some text and walking, which is also in front of something else. We'll create cinemagraphs where we have two different speeds occurring at the same time in a single video. So it looks as though, say Humphrey's pouring some coffee in front of a, inside of a coffee shop, but behind you are windows onto the street. We'll have the cars moving at a very slow speed, but you'll be pouring the coffee at regular normal speed this is the, the tip of the iceberg and what we're going to do. But it's the direction we're going and we have to be able to work with keyframes and muck about with the uh, comp settings and the layers and timelines and such like that. A lot of little one-offs, but we do them, we'll pace it all out so we can easily digest all the other things that are going to be happening. And we've got lots of time. So you're going to end up with, I'm going to jump over here. Come on there. So there's nine projects. There's a presentation as part of your CMC plus the actual video. But you end up with all these other projects Hello. that will take some time to work Hello. on. But you guys will create this, an opening animation and a CMC. These you can work on in groups. These will require a lot more work. These are not task-based. The projects in between there are task-based. You guys get to work on this when we get there. Uh, and create your own product based on what we've covered in After Effects. So these first three files or projects have very specific tools and features that we need to know about that are covered here. Then this project is introduced, but it's going to run up until around week 11. So you can use this 
as a training ground to explore a bunch of treatments that you may want to apply in your CMC project. The CMC and the opening animation are the two projects where you get to flex creative muscle and decide what the visual outcomes are. Everything else are task-based projects and everything is based on a foundation we build with our very first project. So we ramp up quickly, but there's lots of time to work on projects in class and I'll be supplying all of the source files, all of the PDFs, all of the uh, how-to videos, everything you need to work on our projects and to step-by-step -step follow the, how the tools are work and apply those tools and features to assets I've provided um, will help speed up the learning process and keep you on the right track for all of our uh, task-based projects. But then again, I'm not, I didn't make any videos to show you how to create your opening animation or CMC. The way you approach those is all based on how well you comprehend everything else we're doing and what your creative vision will be for those projects. And I know you've already seen some of the uh, CMC projects that were submitted from the students last semester. So you have a sense of the direction where we're going to be going, but we're taking it nice and easy. I know this isn't the only class you have. There'll be tons of project um, material, set files, et cetera, et cetera, for you to be able to reference on a weekly basis in our modules to make your journey a lot, uh, a lot easier and smoother. You won't have to go, what did he say? Memorize what I was doing. Hope that the recording makes reasonable sense because sometimes stuff is out of context or Google things uh, and hope that that ties into what we're doing. Everything here is specific to our projects and or various tools, that kind of thing. I think you guys have a general sense of how I like to, to organize and run the classes. So there won't be any curve balls or anything coming out of left field. That's gonna be a surprise or anything you have to memorize in order to successfully complete the projects. We'll have the equivalent of a test, but it's an in-class test. It's a five percenter and we work with some expressions. It's a little bit of something like a kind of a code for the creating automated animations. There's a lot to get into with After Effects and we'll discover a lot of it as we go along. It won't make a lot of sense if I sit here and go on and on about what we're going to do without context and the, and the assets and everything else to work with. But everybody's always um, been able to produce good product, uh, products out of the class. So hopefully nobody is uh, fearing there's going to be a lot of brain melting and countless hours of homework and uh, you're going to have to put other projects off to the side and maybe phone in sick to work, take time off. None of that stuff is going to have to happen at all. So let's see, what are we looking at here? 2.30. Do you guys, you guys tell me how you want to go with uh, deal with the rest of the time. We technically would go to 3.15, but if you guys want to wrap up right now and just work on this on your own, at your own pace, and then show it to me at the beginning of next week's class, great. If you want to work on it and then show me something in 20 minutes for sign off in class, great. I don't have anything new that I need to show us today. This is what we needed to cover before we move on to anything else. So how do you guys want to uh, proceed? We can wrap up right now. Okay, yeah, it sounds like it. Yeah, if we don't have anything, if you don't have anything to show, for sign off and you don't have any questions yet we might as well just tie everything off then right now okay but please practice between classes get comfortable with what we're doing don't overthink this keyframe layers situation practice rendering your file out too the way i had shown us and reference the um how-to videos getting a good solid foundation now will really make everything a lot smoother and easier as you move forward and then we can start getting into you know the cool the fun stuff and when you guys get into say, job interviews 
you will be asked if you have any experience with motion graphics and after and which will be after effects so this is a highly desirable top of the food chain piece of software to be familiar with you don't have to be a, a an expert at it to the point where you go in and change the coding in it to create new interfaces just enough so you can create the things we're dealing with in class and work on projects similar to what we're working on in class that's that'll be important for sure so there we have it okay again i'm going to shut up i'll turn my mic off in a little bit i'll stop sharing right now so Thank you, thank you everyone for your participation and your patience today. We discovered in 10 minutes before class started, the big blue button was down for some unknown reason. And we were going to jump over into Zoom. So that's good. I'll be firing. I'm glad we were all able to get here. I'll fire off, as I you guys know I do, an email that has shows our agenda for next week, the day before class starts. If big blue button's working, great. We'll know about it soon enough. I like to get to class 15, 20 minutes before it starts to make sure everything's up and running. If big blue button is working, great. If it isn't, well, we'll come back here into Zoom again. So either way, we have a backup plan. So thanks again for your participation today and your patience, gang. It was a little, we had a little couple bumpy parts, but I think everybody has everything they need and we were able to get through uh, today's agenda. So once I get the uh, recording from today's session. I'll see how large it is. I'll figure out how to get that to you and make it accessible. Outside of that, please just download everything that I asked you guys to download today and just take a little perusal through some of the videos. I'm not trying to throw left curve uh, curveballs and left turns in here for anyone. I want the learning process to be a nice smooth process where you don't have to guess about what we're trying to do um, and how we're trying to do things. So thanks again, everybody. I'm going to turn off my mic in a couple of seconds here and then I'll end the session. So take care and we'll talk soon. If you have any questions, email me, let me know who you are, what class you're in, you know, details, and we'll move forward from there. So ciao for now, everybody. Bye-bye.